Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of I Explain. Today I will explain the movie, Black Cat White Cat, directed by Amir Kasturitsa. Before I begin, I'd like to wish everyone a wonderful day. A gypsy father, Makto, lives by the river with his one and only teenage son, Zari. They are small hustlers, their main business is to buy electronics and diesel from Russian boats at cheap rates, and later sell them at a high price. But often, Russians cheat on them with duplicate products. A drug lord, Dayton, is always high on cocaine and surrounded by hot chicks and is a big Pitbull fan. He enjoys every second of his life. The only thing that bothers him is his midget sister, called Ladybird. She doesn't want to marry any random guy that her brother picks for her. She dreams of a big guy and wants to wait for him, believing that someday he will show up and take her away. Ladybird has a temper. Whenever her brother tries to talk about her marriage, she gets angry. But Dayton has a creative way to cool her off. He throws her into the well, and it does the trick. In the next scene, we see a restaurant run by an old lady and her frisky granddaughter, Ida. The old lady is having trouble finding the right singer for her cafe. Zeri, the son of the gypsy, shows up at the restaurant when it is quiet and empty so that he can flirt with Ida. The gypsy, Makto, suddenly comes up with a brilliant idea of buying off a Jordanian cargo train with gasoline. He visits his father's friend, a godfather called Mr. Graga, for the money to buy off the train. Mr. Graga has two grandsons and always encourages his grandson to find a wife before it's too late. However, Makto convinced Mr. Graga that this was the idea of the century. At first, Mr. Graga laughs it off but winds up giving him the money once Makto feeds him a lie that his father passed away and there is no one left to help him. Next, he goes to the drug lord Dayton, asks for more money, and makes a deal with him too. Makto is waiting on the platform for the train with the bag full of money he borrowed from Mr. Graga and Dayton. The train arrives at the right time with gasoline. But Dayton secretly makes a deal with the chief station guard and drugs Makto. After taking the bag, the guard pushed Makto into one of the compartments and locked him away. He grabs a chunk of the money from the bag, which will cost him his life. Dayton's guys notice the cut on the stack, they shoot the guard and hang him with a signal pole. After waking up in the field by the railway, Makto sees the guard. Dayton and his guys enjoy the show named Makoto trying to get his money bag from the dead. When Dayton returns to ask for the gasoline, Makto tells him that the station guard drugged and robbed him. Later in the restaurant, Dayton plays his final move with Makto, he claims his money back tonight by 11 pm. He allows Makto a few minutes to think and starts dancing with the singer and the chicks. He offers a marriage between his sister and Makto's son Zeri, and the debt will be settled. Initially, Makto disagreed, but Dayton got him trapped for good. Meanwhile, the restaurant owner opens a bet that the singer can pull a nail from the wood with her butthole. Ida collects the stakes, and it seems they win a lot of money with the trick. In the next scene, Zeri brings a band party to rescue his grandfather from the hospital. They gave the nurse some money, and she signed the release paper for them. Grandpa wishes to live the rest of his life to the fullest. Zeri comes to the restaurant along with Grandpa. He tries to impress Ida with all he got, and it seems like the chemistry between him and Ida grows smoother. Meanwhile, a pig eats a wrecked car. When Grandpa returns home, Makto gives him a bath and tells him everything that happened to him. Grandpa won't allow this marriage as long as he is alive. When he tells Makto that he will go to his friend Mr. Graga and ask for help, Makto gets scared and replies Mr. Graga is dead. They drink to Mr. Graga's departed soul. The next day, the restaurant owner loads her truck with drinks and sets off to Dayton's palace. Ida and Zeri follow her. As usual, Dayton was snorting cocaine and enjoying music. The old lady comes here with an offer, she wants Dayton to marry Ida, and in exchange, she asks for $35,000. They bargain for a while and makes a deal at the end. Ida and Zare don't look worried. On their way back home, they stop in the sunflower field, kiss for the first time, and fool around. Finally, the day comes, the wedding day of Zeri and the Ladybird. Zeri cannot believe he is going to marry the Ladybird. He angrily asks his grandfather to stop the wedding and hides under Ida's skirt. But Makto finds him anyway. Grandpa finds a brilliant idea to stop the wedding. He shaved, dressed well, put his life savings into the harmonium, and started playing it. Being a gypsy allows him to access magic spells, he uttered one of those and appeared dead. Ida was the first person to notice Grandpa's death. She checked his breathing and announced the death. While Makto cursed over his dead father, Zeri understood the sacrifice that his grandpa made for him. Dayton was being prepared and getting his hair dried for the wedding. Makto appears and tells him he has urgent news. They enter a room filled with wedding gifts. Makto pours a little drink into the ground as gypsy tradition and says that his father is dead. Dayton expresses his condolences, but he insists that the wedding must go on. When Makto asserts that a funeral and a wedding cannot coexist, 
Dayton instructs Makto to hide his deceased father's body until the wedding is over so that they may grieve together. Makto returns home, drinks to his father's departed soul, and preserves the dead body with ice. Dayton shows up with Ladybird in his own style. Makto and the old lady receive them with joy. The priest notices a white cat, which is a bad omen. They tied Zeri and Ladybird's feet together. The priest shuts everyone and asks Zeri and Ladybird if they are doing this marriage out of free will. Zeri looked up at Ida, and he could not utter a word. Dayton and Makto uttered the word yes for them. They untie the bride and groom after the priest announces them as husband and wife. Dayton promised his father he would look after his sisters, and now that he has successfully arranged for his sister's marriage, he is happy than ever. Ida runs to the kitchen and starts crying. Grandma comforts her. Zeri, Ida, and Ladybird must do something to save their love and lives. Dayton gets inside for more nose jobs, and Makto needs to put more ice in the core. After snorting more cocaine, Dayton wishes to play with grenades. Makto gets busy searching for his dad's life savings. This is the perfect time to escape the stage. Ladybird sneaks through her gown and gets under an empty gift box. Ida guards the box till it gets over a barrel. Ladybird enters the barrel, rolls it into a boat, and flees away. One of the guards notices the escape and informs Dayton. He comes out and keeps juggling the grenades and accidentally blasts one of them. After seeing no sign of her sister on the stage, he blasts one more grenade. While the other sisters start crying hysterically, he consoles them by saying he will bring Ladybird back at any cost. Dayton starts interrogating Zare and Ida. He even beats them until Makto breaks in through the roof and informs them that he saw Ladybird running into the woods. Meanwhile, Mr. Graga and his grandsons were on their way to visit his late friend's grave. As a result of a road bump, Mr. Graga and the younger grandson get detached from the car. Their customized cot stops on a hillock. It seems nothing can interrupt the young grandson's sleep. Makto and Dayton spot Ladybird, but she's good at hiding. She enters a tree trunk. They searched everywhere and turned the other way. She accidentally drops one of her shoes on the road. The elder grandson stops to check on the passengers in the back. He doesn't find them. Instead, he finds a beautiful, cute, pink shoe. While driving through the forest, he notices the moving tree trunk. The man gets off the car and stops it. He looks through the hole of the trunk. Ladybird looks through the hole, and their gaze meets each other. Thanks to destiny, Ladybird just found her prince. While they were busy knowing each other and searching for the other shoe, Ladybird's sister saw them and screamed loudly. Graga Jr. pulls his gun and starts shooting at them. Dayton gets angry and points his gun at Jr. He claims his sister back. Jr.'s brother runs into the standoff and joins his brother. Graga Jr. offers Dayton to arrange a marriage between them. He doesn't care about the marriage she flew from. When they are arguing, Mr. Graga comes in, shooting the guns away from Dayton's hand. Dayton recognized him as soon as he saw the face. It seems he likes and respects his grandson's soulmate. With Mr. Graga accepting his grandson's new wife, nothing can come their way now. The pig continues eating the wrecked car. They all get back in Makto's plays, and Mr. Graga settles all the issues and debts between Makto and Dayton. He commands Dayton to complete the marriages of these couples. Now that Mr. Graga has demanded to see his friend's grave, Makto advises him to take it easy for the evening, and they may visit the cemetery in the morning. Mr. Graga had a stroke after having a couple more drinks. After a while, Dayton and Makto found Mr. Graga's unconscious body. They put his body with his friend's corpse. Everyone had fun the whole night, but not Makto. He lost all the money and his house, gambling with Dayton. While Makto was preparing to stake the last property he had, which is a golden tooth, a miracle happened. By the spells of the black cat and white cat Mr. Graga and his friend rise from the dead. Everyone was stunned. In the presence of everyone, finally, the two couples had a proper engagement. As soon as they finish the ceremony, the Russian boat appears on the river. Zeri dreamed of this exact moment many times. He always wanted to leave this place. With the help of Grandpa's money, Zeri and Ida will enter their new phase of life. Makto and Dayton remain in the shithole and become good friends later.